Hello, everybody. My name is Trevor Alexander, co-founder of Edheni, where we are changing healthcare together. We are the fastest, most efficient, and most secure way of conducting health research that reflects the unique needs of the BIPOC population. Okay, so what is the problem here? The problem is that drugs are not being tested on the demographics of our country, and regulators are beginning to mandate that medical research reflects the population to actually approve these drug developments being released um, onto the market. 2% is the current representation of the BIPOC community, with 51% of our country being minority over the next 15 years. This is a problem that's only growing. 70% of this community does not have access to medical research, and 80% of clinical trials are delayed by at least one month due to recruitment and retention issues. So it's an extremely expensive problem on their side. This market will grow to $70 billion over the next six years. Currently, it's $48 billion, $47 billion globally, with 24 that here in the United States. We believe that we can capture, uh, we're playing in a market of the $4.3 billion. Our solution is a B2B service that conducts health research 100% virtually for our community. This improves the R&D processes for sightless research, operations and patient engagement, in-house screening, a care and delivery, and also population health management, which clearly helps on the finance optimization and operational efficiency side. Where we really differ is that we are community focused. Because of this, our customer acquisition cost is much lower than a lot of the competitors that we've seen from extensive research on the numbers. Furthermore, our tech-enabled service is 100% synchronous, which I'll explain more. End-to-end -end delivery allows for clinicians and researchers to actually integrate and have a more seamless workflow in their day-to-day, -day, and their data will be integrated to just make things a more seamless process on both the patient and the researcher side. We do have a few direct competitors here. Where we most stand out is our solution was built for both researchers and patients uh, with design in mind from the onset. We're not trying to retrofit anything here. And due to many different programs and extensive research, customer feedback and interviews, uh, we took a you know, really detailed approach to designing our system. Furthermore, as uh, stated, we are community focused and this, um, especially in this, in this space, of the patient recruitment enrollment, uh, customer acquisition is um, one of the most expensive things. And we are able to reach customers, acquire customers, retain customers at a much lower cost than a lot of competitors. Okay, so what is our product vision? Our product vision over the next three to 18 months is to really focus in on the patient, the patient centric platform. So engagement and focus groups. After that, we will expand nationally, so non-invasive research wearables. As many know, a lot of the issues within a BIPOC community start with trust. So the way that we like to roll this out is, hey, you know, focus groups are something that people are a bit more familiar with, right? And the conditioning, we will be able to condition people within our platform uh, to build that rapport. And that's why going to phase two, we will do more non-invasive wearables, et cetera. And then ultimately, over the next three to five years, we'll focus on 100% decentralized trials that can be conducted from anywhere. Uh, since the pandemic, a lot more decentralized trials have become more popular and firms and companies, CROs are starting to now enable these different studies to happen from the comfort of their home and users will be able to access these uh, right from within our system. Our go to market strategy, over the next three months, we will uh, focus on the patient engagement, increasing our user community users to 5,000 users and 15 companies. From there, we will continue to go on to allow our platform to be multilingual and continue to build up our uh, company base. And the next year to year and a half, we will focus on uh, more specific focus groups and also uh, getting more contracts with uh, big pharma companies as we help populate their actual clinical research studies. And ultimately, we will also enable Spanish-speaking studies to all happen with inside of our service. So you can kind of think of us like uh, an Uber for the medical research community. There are different jobs that will have to ultimately be um, housed um, that can be, I'm sorry, that can be outsourced. So think, you know, nurse assistants, drug delivery, 
transcribers, moderators, all these will be, we will be able to bring in, you know, different qualified professionals to conduct these different groups. So everything is basically happening on an automated, on a, in an automated fashion. And all this will happen, you know, within, with inside of our system from beginning to end. Okay, so what is the opportunity? The opportunity to work with Edhini as we build our community to 102,000 users and 115 data customers is $4 million by the end of 2023. We are seeking an initial investment of $1 million as we move towards this goal. Our team has extensive, has extensive experience across business, technology, biotech, and healthcare. Gerard Charlot, who's on the call, is our co-founder and CEO. He has done Obamagra Obamacare integrations across the VA. Myself, um, from an information systems background, done federal health network integrations across Lockheed and also Hewlett Packard. AJ, our CTO, is a McKinsey alum and also a principal at Redstone. Dr. Jones is a senior laboratory manager and also has extensive research at JSU Bloomberg School of Public Health. And our strategic advisor is Joseph Wells, who is the director of the Earl Gray School of Business and Management at Morgan State University. Thank you, everybody, and please join Edhini and Changing Healthcare together.